Hey dudes, what's happening? This is Trent, and today I want to talk to you about making tileable textures in Photoshop. Uh, this is particularly useful for video game development. Uh, you can use it in painting as well, but basically you want to create something that loops so that you have this one image, and as it is repeating, it will you will not see seams, it will infinitely repeat. And the key to doing this lies in the filters section of Photoshop. So what you want to do is cruise over to the area called filter, scroll down to other, and go to offset. Now offset allows you to change the horizontal or vertical offset of an image. And you can see where I'm playing with the sliders. My image is, is 512 by 512. So if I go 256 uh, by 256, I'm splitting it in half and it's going to just slide the image over it from the edge. Now, before you do this though, make sure that you've cropped your image. Make sure that you don't have any uh, anything going outside of the boundaries. Make sure that you hit crop on it and uh, and then go and do your, your offset filter. And once you've once you've created once you've offset it by 256 or by half whatever your resolution is, uh, then you can go in and just paint in that area that got messed up that area that that connects those edges and fill it in as if it were infinitely repeating and tiling. And you'll notice after we do this, of course, all those edges will fit together at any angle at any. Uh, number of repetitions. Then, of course, the question begin becomes: How do you separate our object so that it doesn't look like old 16-bit repeating tiles? And the key to that is to break up your shapes into uh, small, medium, and large. Have one larger object, and then smaller, uh, medium-sized details, and then uh, in between all of that, have your your smaller rocks and smaller details. Some other techniques and tricks that I'm using to get a very more uh, much more painterly style is to use the mixer brush, and that can be found uh, in the brush uh, icon. If you hold down the brush icon in your tools over on the left side, uh, just hold that down, and you can see different types of brushes that you can select. Scroll down to the mixer brush and you find yourself with a tool that allows you to smudge a lot more and blend colors, blend your paints a little bit more. So that's how you get that kind of like Warcrafty looking painterly style of texture. Now, to be fair and completely transparent, I didn't do a lot of texture work on those games. Uh, this is for a Unity engine project that I'm, I'm working on right now. And it's something that I've been using a lot more of, and so I thought it would be very useful for others if you're making an indie game or if you're making um, a, uh, a project where you need uh, bricks, for instance, you can create a tileable texture that you can then use. Uh, you can actually save it as a brush if you want to. Um, and then you can literally, with one brush stroke, create a tileable texture. This could be applied for a lot of different uses and functions and features. And it's such a hidden thing. Uh, I've, I've did a little bit of research looking around for ways to create tileable textures years back, and it took me a while to find this. So. Uh, I'm sure that there aren't other tutorials, but I saw that not many of them were super clear on how to do it. Hopefully this communicates very clearly to you uh, one method of doing so. Uh, as you can see, I have completed some rendering on the vertical uh, line. So now I'm going to adjust the horizontal offset, and that's going to allow me to double check to make sure, as you can see, I'm kind of scrolling through slowly just to look for any errors where there might be like a abrupt line or anywhere where it looks like there's a cut or a disruption to the flow of it. And uh, <clears throat> not seeing any, oh, there's one. There is definitely one there on the left side. And uh, it, this is why it's important to scroll through it and check it at all different levels of offset because now I, I realize there's a little bit of a problem here. We just smooth that out and all of those edges are now going to, they're gonna fit seamlessly together. This is actually a lot of fun to create tileable textures and it gets even more fun when you start dropping these assets into uh, your, if, if it's working with Construct or, or Construct Skira by Skira or Unity Engine or whatever tool you might be using to create uh, tileable uh, game environments, you know. Um, I I think you could also use it in traditional or not traditional, but digital painting. If you're making something where you've got 
um, bricks, for instance, or if you have like a ground area and uh, you might as well just paint it once, tile it, and then copy paste it, you know, but make sure that if you need to make sure that it tiles and connects to each other, there you go. Uh, something else I'm trying to do is make sure that my, I, I keep my levels of contrast fairly even. Uh, later towards the end, you'll see that I actually lay down a lighten layer so that I make sure that there's no areas where um, anything gets too high contrasty. Um, you want to have a consistent light source across your image, and I could have done a little bit better of a job with this uh, in this painting, and uh, especially with painting rocks, there's a lot of color variations and things that you can get in there. But uh, I don't want to draw too much attention to these rocks. Uh, I just need them to have an illusion of subtle depth, not dramatic depth, because as you're parallaxing in the game, I don't want for players to become confused as to what's in the foreground and background. Uh, of, of a flat surface or a somewhat flat surface. Uh, I did also uh, start adding in some textures to the rocks. Uh, and if you have my brush pack, you'll know what I'm talking about. I got a few brushes in there that have a very smeary, textury, uh, um, kind of a um, noise to them. And uh, by using a combination of lightened layers and darkened layers, I was able to create a little bit more grain in my texture that sort of pulls the whole thing together to give it a little bit more of a rocky kind of a surface. As I'm laying down a lot of that more grainy stuff, by the way, I sped it up a little bit here, but as I, as I started laying down more of that grainy uh, kind of a brush texture, I started also erasing out with a very soft airbrush so that it, I can back it off and then add more and then back it off as I need just to get a very organic looking feel out of the whole thing. Um, it really is a process of developing your, your painting skills to, to take this to the next level. And um, as far as I'm concerned, like the style that, that this game is for, it fits pretty closely to what I was aiming for. Uh, so, I, but that's a whole different tutorial. I have a lot of different videos here on YouTube and in my uh, tutorial box set that'll go over different methods of painting and uh, how to get uh, more out of Photoshop and uh, and other painting tools to get uh, to improve your, your painting skills. I'm not gonna go too much into that uh, with this other than to say I wanted stylized rocks and that's what I got. Um, as far as... Uh, the tiling goes, I noticed at some point uh, it, it I needed to completely rework it. And so that's why I started breaking up some of the shapes into smaller uh, bits of rock. And I started making other chunks of rock feel larger so that it wasn't uh, so uniform. Uh, something you want to avoid when you're doing this sort of work is you don't want all of your rocks to feel like they're the same size next to each other. It's uh, very, very valuable to get more variety. Here you can see I had just rendered all that stuff and I was like, mm, I need to, for readability purposes, break up my shapes into that large, medium and small a little bit more just to get like a little bit more uh, of an area for the eye to rest uh, just a bit. And, uh, and so that's why I started to sort of abandon some of the, the work that I had done on it. Here I'm distorting it even more to get a bigger chunk of rock, uh, and that gets even bigger. So, in fact, I, I just selected the whole thing and then copied and pasted it so that I've got one massive rock that just blends into the other rocks. Um, and this can be a lot of fun. It can be very therapeutic. I like to put on a little bit of Pink Floyd when I'm painting uh, textures or icons. Uh, or, or a little bit of, uh, let's see, I was really into, uh, uh, some comedy shows recently. Started watching, uh, um, uh, Key and Peel. Pretty funny stuff. <laughs> but, uh, I think I'm on like season four right now. It's good. The thing I love about doing texture work and, and icon work is that, uh, after a while it becomes a lot easier to just sort of switch into a little bit of autopilot and uh and and just have fun rendering pushing pixels around uh and uh just rendering on materials and getting lost in in uh just the movement of the pixels you know it can be a lot of it can be very therapeutic and lower the stress levels as opposed to lining up more work or uh or dealing with like uh high levels of stress with character designs that can be a very stressful a very stressful gig texture painting is not that and in fact if you have interest in working in the game industry 
uh, texture painting is a very viable and exciting path to take. It's not super glamorous, but every studio needs a ton of it. So uh, all that stuff said, uh, now you can kind of uh, begin to see how these pieces will, will fit together. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of a test here. We go to increase our canvas size so we can take a look at how these how this is going to tile together if we see them all lined up next to each other. And uh, so what I've done is I go into image canvas size and then I just adjust it to 200% so that I can copy and paste them over, uh, make a selection of my uh, of my tile. Now, a, a more efficient way to do this would be if you create a grid, but I don't want to confuse you or frustrate you. So I've just done a quick test here where I've slid over copies of it and we're just seeing how well does it fit together if I have a lot of these tiling up next to each other. And it's actually not bad. It's pretty good, actually. Um, you'll notice this is, you'll, this is where you can really see what I was talking about, about the the larger medium and smaller details. And I could keep going with rendering on these, but uh, the real trick here was uh, finding that offset filter that really changed everything for me anyway. Uh, years ago when I was doing textures on old Game Boy Advance stuff. So fun tool to know. I hope this helped you with developing your game or with developing your process. Uh, if you would like to know more cheap tricks or <laughs> Photoshop stuff that I may not have covered in any of my other videos, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to learn to paint the way that I paint, uh, please swing on over to my uh, Gumroad box set of tutorials where I go in depth on my process and my techniques. You get my brushes and all the other fun stuff there too. For everybody else that just comes by for the, the videos uh, on the weekly, I certainly appreciate you stopping by and I can't wait to see you in the next video. All right, dudes, take it easy. Ciao.